So uh, again, my name is Devin Teeley. I'm the infrastructure manager for Lethbridge County. Thank you everybody for joining online with us today. Um, ideally, we do this in person, but due to the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, we're doing this online uh, open house for everybody. So we hope you get a lot of good information out of it. We're looking for a lot of feedback from everybody uh, just to get a really good tight model of the Battersea and Eight Mile Lake drainage basins. Uh, just some background how this kind of all got started. County Council wanted a countywide stormwater master plan completed and that was done several years ago which identified uh, several basins, drainage basins within the county itself. And we took the basically the worst basins and did detailed analysis for those basins. So we're working on the Battersea and Eight Mile Lake one uh, this year. We hired ISL Engineering to do the plan for us and uh, I'll maybe pass it off to Garnet and Amanda to further explain this project. Perfect, thank you, Devin. Uh, I'm Garnet Dawes with ISL Engineering, uh, project engineer for, for this project. Uh, and Amanda is facilitating our public engagement for us. So biggest thing is there is a QA and a uh, box that you can type into. So uh, as Devin mentioned, we are looking for as much feedback as we can possibly get uh, around these these two watersheds and uh, we'll talk through that so don't hesitate to ask questions as they come up and also uh, uh, if something pops up afterwards uh, all this stuff is live for another week or so um, so make sure you get the questions in uh, or commentary um, before before the end of the the review period kind of thing um, so the biggest thing with uh, what we're looking at here is we've got the eight mile and Battersea uh, catchment areas. What we've done is uh, we have created very detailed 2D models uh, of both catchments, but the catchments are only as good as the information we have. So what we've done is uh, we've looked at the topography in terms of LIDAR, and we've also surveyed a bunch of culverts and roadways. Uh, and we put all that into a very sophisticated computer model. That being said, computer models are only as good as the information that get put into it. So this is why we're doing the open house uh, tonight is to get some feedback on if kind of what we've put forward uh, for the uh, model results is in line with, with landowner understanding of, of what's been going on out there. Maybe flip to the next slide, Amanda. Perfect. So um, as Devin mentioned, uh, the, the two watersheds have experienced you know, property damage, crop loss, additional flooding, there's irrigation interface um, elements that are popping up. And uh, basically the county is trying to get a handle on what the priority list is for the problems that they need to fix and, and then how to address them. So our reporting following this will we'll start looking at solutions and helping the county develop budgets uh, and a game plan over the next however many years to start addressing some of these issues um, as we move forward. Um, so some of the bigger considerations for the project was obviously your stormwater issues. We've modeled everything for a one in a hundred year peak event, uh, but again, it's based on LIDAR, uh, which is quite accurate, but it you know doesn't handle all the nuances of some of the uh, smaller grade areas. Uh, so hence why we want some more feedback. Um, basically, if the upgrades um, can be done holistically, if there's a bigger picture solution, or if these are more case by case scenarios on, on a smaller scale. Uh, and that kind of runs the gambit from, from big issues down to small. And you'll see that on, on the figures if, if you've reviewed them already. Um, and then, yeah, just getting a game plan for the future, setting up priorities and uh, staging plans so that the uh, county can start to budget and uh, figure out um, how they're gonna tackle some of these issues. Perfect. So. We've got the eight mile lake drainage plan here. Uh, again, these are model results. And so I'm not sure if everyone's looked through a lot of this information before getting on the call, or this is the first time you've seen it. But what we're trying to show here is the significant ponding issues that are occurring. Um, and if you look at the legend on the right hand side, you'll see the different colors. So what that's representing is it's in uh, uh, meters. And that's representing the ponding depths that we're seeing in our models. And as I mentioned, what we did is we took LIDAR, which is essentially flown survey information of the whole area. 
and then we surveyed all of the roads. We took that information, put it over top of the LIDAR surface, and then we went and surveyed all the culverts. And so a lot of bottlenecks uh, in a rural setting are typically created by uh, culverts and road grades, uh, elements like that, or you know, existing overland channels that have been cut off historically just because of grading that happened 50 or 60 years ago. Uh, so this is trying to replicate what's, um, what's happening out in the real world. And again, keeping in mind, this is a computer model. Uh, so it's, it's probably not 100% calibrated to what's out there. And this is what we're really looking for feedback on. Um, as you can see, there are areas where the ponding is getting to a meter to over a meter. And that's where you can see the orange and the red. Uh, and those would probably be hot spots that we would look to first uh, to try to figure out what's going on. Uh, and as you can see, those ponding areas are spreading, you know, well into private property, which is, you know, clearly where the landowner's considerations are coming from. Um, you know, if, if there's any questions, we can take them at the end or as they come up. Uh, but that's essentially what we did for, for both um, catchments. So maybe Amanda, you can flip to the, uh, the Battersea. Um, and as you can see here, very similar type results, hotspots are, are different. Uh, and the reason that we're, we're basically restricting ponding from 0.2 to 0.4 on the low end of the range is because when it rains, especially a 100 year event, you're going to see a lot of water everywhere. So this was meant to really zoom in on where we think problem areas are and uh, to help us look further. But again, any feedback that landowners have around this, if the extents aren't you know, what you're experiencing on site, if there's something that, that you don't see on here at all, um, please highlight that. Don't be scared to mark up um, the figures in your, uh, in your mail out package and send it back. We really want feedback on this uh, because it helps us calibrate our model so that we know the decisions we're helping the county make are accurate. So the next steps from here is we're going to take the feedback that we get from tonight and anything that is sent to us either digitally or mailed back to us. We're going to uh, compile all that information. We're going to go back to our model and we're going to see uh, if, if we're seeing a lot of landowner feedback in areas that are not represented in the model. Uh, we'll expand on that, maybe do some additional uh, investigation. Uh, and then from there, we'll, we'll move to start finalizing the master drainage plans and um, essentially start helping the county come up with um, cost estimates, capital plans, and those kind of pieces for, for bigger picture for solutions on how to, uh, to deal with some of these items. So that's pretty well everything in a nutshell. Um, Devin, was there anything I missed there? That... No, I think you captured it quite well, Garnet. As you said, this is a plan to guide the county in the future for future capital projects. We're we're really trying to just understand um, where we can focus our efforts uh, to have the greatest impact in mitigating flooding in those two basins. So it's it's a plan. It's going to be a long ways out before all the upgrades can be completed, but at least it's a starting point and we can focus on those on those uh, worse areas. Perfect. So I guess we'll open it up to questions now. Um, if you're having any issues with the technology, please let us know. Maybe I'll just put the, the maps back up as well. I feel like those are, would be a helpful uh, tool to just have up while we may have some questions about the projects. Looks like Ray Martin has, has a question. It, it, Amanda, Amanda, can we just let Ray uh, uh, talk? Is that possible? Sure. Because I think there's only there's only a few people registered. All right, go, go ahead, Ray. Me? Can you hear me on the phone? We can. Oh, I just I'm having trouble. Uh, like I couldn't view your your uh, your presentation earlier, and I can't. Is this going to be uh, available? All this information for downloading and all that, to, uh, so that I can take a closer look at it. Like, yes, yeah, it will. Like, uh, okay. You can pull it off okay. the website, the digital boards. Um, there, there's a link that you can go to and you can see them digitally. Also, there, there is a mail out that occurred where you'll be getting hard copies of these uh, drawings. 
so you can mark up right on the drawing. If you if you haven't received the mail out yet, please let us know because uh, I think it went out late last week, Devin, or early this week. Late last week, yeah. So some you, of our clients got it. I just I just ne I never received it, and I when I go onto your website, I I wasn't able to pull the information off when you when you click on it. So that, that's why I was just wondering if I can get a copy. Sure. And digitally. So as people registered for the session today, uh, we do have your email address. So that's something that we could uh, email you copies of the, the display boards from the session tonight as well. And link to the, oh, the website where the recording of the session tonight will be uh, posted as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Great. Did you have any other questions? Uh, no, not, not right now. Thanks. Okay. All right, looks like we have another question from uh, Martin, just uh, has his hand up and I'll just unmute him as well. If you'd like to, Martin, if you'd like to provide your question. Just have to unmute yourself. Or you can also use the, um, the questions tool at the bottom of yep. your uh, screen as well. You can hear me now? I can. Oh, good. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a landowner on the Battersea, uh, Battersea uh, drain plan. Uh, I think, in, uh, first of all, the Battersea is uh, really flat, and I think uh, really to improve the area of the drainage, uh, I think you have really to look on the end. Uh, where it is uh, going back in the Old Man River. Uh, that uh, particular drain is only, I believe, 27, uh, 27 inch. And if you have rain events like in 2003 and 2005, and, and I think it was 9 and 10 as well, then uh, it takes too long to get to the pipe, right? Because it's quite flat as well. And another thing what I like to say is um, where the better she starts, that is uh, a few fields what we have there. Uh, I saw the, the the blue marks, right? But I guess those areas, if we get in four inches of rain or five inches, that those areas are way bigger. Okay. Okay. Um, are you able to mark up the areas just, just roughly um, on your figure just to... Uh... So it sounds like what you're seeing is that in lower rain events that aren't one in a hundred, you're still seeing a lot of ponding. Is that a correct statement? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. So it's probably a, it's probably a case where um, because it's so flat, you know, even a five year event, you're seeing a lot of ponding, whereas a hundred year might capture yeah. it, but uh, it, the frequency wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be the same. So that's a fantastic comment. Um, please formally submit it. I will, I will note it. Obviously I'm the author of these, these documents, but it's just easier for me to make sure I capture it properly because what we've shown here is the one in a hundred, but I think what we'll need to do is show a couple figures of the one in five and one in 25, uh, to, to capture some of yeah. the low frequency items. Yeah. And that is special on the, I have the land location too, uh, on the Southwest, on the South half of the Southwest. 9, 11, 20, that is, uh, that goes almost for, uh, for almost half on the water, uh, if you have an, an, an event. Okay. Uh, that would be very valuable to, uh, if you could just mark up that, uh, do you have the hard copies that were mailed out? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Can you mark that up and please send it to us? Um, that's the exact type of feedback I want to make sure we're capturing here. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Do you have anything else, Martin, you'd like to add? Uh, not on this point. I like to give other people the chance to ask questions too, right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So it looks like we've had a few people join by phone um, as well as uh, their computer audio. So again, there is the Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen that you can use to type in your questions. Uh, but if you're finding that uh, challenging to use, you can also raise your hand um, and let us know if you'd like to um, speak and I can un unmute you as well if you have a question. Let's give folks a minute there. 
Amanda, if they're joining by phone, are, are they able to, how do they raise their hand with their phone? Yeah, the last, um, I, I know Ray for sure was on, uh, joined us by phone, I believe, and uh, he was able to use the raise the hand function. Okay, so they do they have to click on the screen or do they have to click the button? Uh, yeah, I think there's a, there's a button on the bottom that will uh, allow you to raise your hand. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do, um, just to see if there's anybody else having any tech issues, I will uh, allow folks um, to talk. And then if they want to unmute themselves, then they can. If there's any issues with maybe people, uh, too many people talking, we'll just maybe try and uh, use the raise the hand um, option. Just seeing if anybody else has any uh, questions. Let's give folks a minute. And again, the unmute uh, yourself function is also, it, it should be on the bottom of your screen, uh, but depending how you're joining us this evening, it could be on, on the side of your screen as well. It's just an image of a, of a microphone um, that you'll just have to click to unmute yourself. And for anyone who might have joined a bit late, uh, we, we kind of burned through the presentation rather quickly. If there's any slides you want me to go back to um, or, or talk through any of the modeling ideology, um, totally available. Okay, it looks like Martin, you've uh, unmuted yourself. Do you have uh, some other questions for us? No, I'd just like to say to the other participants that uh, I used uh, the button for um, raise your hand and then it was working. So the ISL and um, county contact info has been circulated on this. Uh, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call or send an email. Um, you can even pop into the county office if, if that's easier. Um, we, we absolutely want feedback and um, you know if you have any questions about what we're doing we're we're totally transparent with what we're trying to accomplish here yeah and if like you said Garnet uh, everybody if you want to come into the office please come and see me if you want to bring your map in and discuss it more than willing to sit down with anyone and and take a look so um, yeah feel free to come in just remember to wear your mask oh looks like we have a question Great. From it's a question. I'll just read it out to the team here. So, is the county looking for a long-term fix or short-term? So, the question. Um, it's it's. I can see this as a long-term project. Um, I can, and maybe Garnet, you can speak to it a little bit more. But I can see several phases being included in this. Uh, you know, it all depends on what it's going to cost, what the county has for budget, and what can what we can afford to do over the years. So. I can foresee it being a multi-year uh, staging type of project. Um, Garnet, did you have anything to, to add? T typically with these types of projects, I agree with Devin, it's long-term, but the priority is always the low hanging fruit. What's gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck in the short term. So that's typically solve the biggest problem uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, so that would be kind of how we would, would start with the ranking system and then look at what the longer term fix is. Um, you know, a, as you mentioned, the, uh, some of these areas are quite flat. And, and when you have large flat areas, uh, just catching grade or, or getting the water out can be, can turn into very large excavations and, and conveyance elements. So it's, it's a balance. Um, but I guess to that, if you have any uh, feedback on what you think a good ranking criteria would be in terms of how to prioritize it for the county. We're totally open to uh, the feedback. Um, you know, some of these bigger problems could be solved relatively quickly, possibly with some culvert upgrades, for example. But the problem with a culvert upgrade is as soon as you upgrade one culvert, now you've triggered all the other culverts downstream that have to be upgraded, right? Um, so that's our next piece of this um, study is to go through those possible solutions. Uh, but again, I don't want to be coming up with solutions if the existing model that we've got together is not representative of what's happening in the in the real world. So that's why this community engagement is so important, because we want to make sure that our model results are pretty close. They'll never be perfect to what's happening in the real world. 
and then our solutions will be more applicable uh, and we'll be able to make better decisions uh, as we move through the short and long-term fixes for this. Great. Does that answer your question, Rob? All right, I'll just keep an yeah, eye great, on. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, um, Rob. Could I have a follow-up, please? Sure. So, um, just mentioned on culvert updates, uh, upgrades, which have been done um, uh, in, in this past year. Um, that's great that it has been done by uh, county crossings, but then there's also private culverts in between. And that's where we still have issues then. Um, if, you, if, you, if you fix culverts, just as you mentioned, uh, Garnet there, um, you are creating an issue when you're when you're upgrading some, but then downstream you you're not because they're either private or they, um, you know, uh, combination of of, of other um, ways of, of who owns those of who have jurisdiction over those, and that might be an issue. So we have to come up with landowners. Um, um, county and um, drain it's what some of it uh, let Chris Norton is doing as well so I think it has to be a combination of, of multiple things you're absolutely Thanks. right it, it, it's the it's the bane of rural drainage where you know to fix a local problem you upgrade a culvert and then it creates something else downstream uh, we are well aware of that uh, I can't guarantee that the First solution out of the gate will be absolutely perfect because some of the variables that you highlighted are absolutely true, right? If it's a private culvert, uh, sometimes it's out of the county's hands to, to deal with that. But that being said, we will be bringing that lens to this. And if there is certain types of engagements that the county needs to do to, to, to bring one of these solutions to, to the table, um, I suspect that they will exercise every avenue they can to make sure it's done properly and not creating additional impacts to a downstream resident. Excellent. Thank you. Darn it. I'm just having connection issues. It's freezing on me periodically. So if there's a question directed towards me and I don't answer, please just uh, let me know when I come back online. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for letting us know. We just have one more question and I can actually respond to this one. Um, it's a question uh, just about asking if there's a digital map online that you can zoom in on. So the maps that were provided to landowners as part of their mail out package uh, are available in our virtual open house tool, which is available on the county website. Um, in the online survey, which again, the link to the survey is on the county website as well. Uh, there is a link to uh, a high resolution map so that you can zoom in on the map while you're completing your survey. Um, and again, if you need something uh, different from us, or if you need uh, something emailed to you, uh, please do reach out to us at uh, info at islengineering.com or to Devon, and we can uh, get that to you. Great. I hope that answered that question. And again, if there's anything, um, more information that you guys need, just, just let us know. All right. See if there's any other questions there. Oh, looks like Martin. Yeah, um, I think why it is a little bit disappointed there are not too many people on. I guess uh, I just get uh, yesterday afternoon uh, pick up the mail at the mailbox and there it was in the invitation for this actually. And I think that is one of the reasons that there are not ma many people on this uh, on this uh, conference for a minute. Okay. Yeah, and I apologize about that, Martin. We did try to get those letters out earlier last week. We had about 515 letters to send out and our yeah. letter machine broke down. So I had about eight staff helping me for a solid day packing envelopes <laughs> and trying to get it out. So I do apologize for that, Martin. We had some, we had some uh, mechanical yeah. difficulties with our machine. Uh, with, with but that, I think that is one of the reasons, yeah, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, Martin, uh, if, if you and your neighbors, if you're getting a lot of feedback from your neighbors that that was the case, please let us know. Um, we we want to make sure that we're engaging people and, and also please encourage your neighbors to respond. 
so they should have access to all the information. The only thing that at this point they wouldn't have access to is us answering the questions that we are right now. But that being said, is I, yeah. I don't think Devin has any issues if, if both ISL and the county are answering questions to specific landowners as they come up. So, so please don't hesitate to, to reach out. You have our contact info. And, and if, if your neighbors are saying that they missed it just because of when the mail out got there, um, please let us know or, or encourage them to reach out to us. I will do that, thank you. All right, just seeing if there's any other questions, whether they're in the uh, question and answer tool or if anybody else has their, wants to raise their hand or unmute themselves. All right, I'll go ahead, Rob. Thank you. Um, so uh, in the Battersea and, and, and on both of those projects, um, you know, those drains have been in there for a long period of time and they've been put in there with the, um, with the notion that water runs downhill and which is obviously very flat. Um, down the road, just because with uh, technologies that we have today, would there be um, options being looked at uh, for for pump outs or uh, protection of um, valuable land because it's it's a lot different as what it was um, 50, 60 years ago when, when some of this stuff has been put into place. And so um, reallocation of, of drainage or pump outs or different options that are uh, maybe available today that weren't available um, when the drains were put into place. Uh, is that an option that's been looked at as far as um, a, a long-term solution? Uh, all, all options are on the table. Um, to be completely honest with you, we haven't developed a, a laundry list of options yet because we're not 100% sure that the model results we have are 100% accurate. And that's part of why we need to get through the community engagement piece now uh, to make sure that we're getting landowner feedback after that, we will kind of recalibrate our model and that's when we'll get into uh, solution development. Um, you're absolutely right. There is a, a plethora of, of different types of solutions out there. Uh, you know, pump outs are always uh, something that can be deployed depending on the value proposition. Uh, but again, there's a maintenance and upkeep cost. And then also with, with pump outs is, in my experience, they always seem to fail at the least opportune time. You know what I mean? Um, so the, all options are on the table. Um, and, you know, to your point about a lot of these drainage solutions being put in 50 or 60 years ago, sometimes the issues that you have now can correlate to, uh, not lack of maintenance, but just the fact that you have rural accumulation within ditches and those kind of pieces over, you know, half a century that can start to slow down the flows. So there, you know, some of these solutions could be to go in and, and grade out some of the existing infrastructure that was built 50 or 60 years ago that nature has been slowly kind of taking back. Um, all of those are on the table. If, if you have specifics that you would like us to consider, absolutely uh, forward them to us. Um, but, but personally, I work in both heavily or heavy urban areas and rural areas. So I'm quite familiar with, with drainage technology. Uh, and all of those are on the table for, for what we're looking at here. Excellent, thank you. Great, it looks like we have one question um, that just came in on the, the Q&A tool here, so I'll just read it out. So saying there's an area south of Highway 519, it's draining to the south into a low flat area, making a huge detour to the Old Man River through Battersea. Why can't you drain this area to the east and bring it to the Old Man River through other drainage ditches? Uh, is, this is something. Is this something worth looking into? Absolutely. Just to, sorry, just to clarify for those who can't see that draining north, not south of five nineteen. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I was, I was wondering. Okay, so yeah, if you. Uh, can you zoom in Amanda on just you see the 519 there and uh, um, it's kind of on the bottom of the slide there so absolutely that's the type of feedback that we're looking for um, I'd have to take this back and look at it but those types of solutions you know as landowners who are very intimate with the area and the natural topography um, we are going off digital information largely 
So there, there's likely solutions that you are aware of that is easier for you to see as a, as a landowner than us at this time. So that type of feedback is fantastic. Uh, but just in the context of this question, are you referring to um, the section 311024? Uh, they They've responded saying yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming it's that area that it's kind of impounded up against 519. Um, and, and basically they want to take it north and east along the highway right away it, it is kind of what I'm getting from that question. Um, we can absolutely look at that, you know, that type of impoundment, right, between the blue and the lighter blue is probably half a meter to 800 mils uh, of ponding. So it, it's absolutely a sizable uh, impoundment of water. Those are the types of things we're, we're going to be looking at here. And, and I absolutely want suggestions on what you think can be done. Um, but that would be something we would be looking at. I haven't put a lot of thought to that specific location at this time because we're in just the calibration phase of the model. Um, but that is an area we'll, we'll, we will be looking at. All right, great. So there's another question here. Um, and they just was another response just to that question, just saying, uh, keep it running south of the highway. Just a comment there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and, and that's why we're looking at these solutions holistically. Um, you know, a lot of it ultimately comes down to, to topography uh, and what we can, what we can make work. So, um, you know, all, all suggestions right now are, are good suggestions. Great. Let's see if there's anybody else that wants to unmute themselves. Oh, it looks like we've got Martin. Do you have a question? Just another comment, if I may uh, actually go on it. Uh, what I understand, the better she is kind of uh, uh, LNID have to look after that, right? Yeah. And maybe they should be involved in this as well, right? They, they are. Um, they are a, a large stakeholder in this area. Um, again, we will be engaging them a little bit more formally uh, once we have our thoughts together and we have input, input from the landowners. Um, they are aware this project's going on, but we have to come to them with what we're proposing versus just saying, hey, what would you do, if that makes sense? Um, and, and I agree, uh, and irrigation districts are very large stakeholders and it's sometimes their interests relative to water are a little different than the counties and that can create, uh, uh, I guess, creative opportunities and uh, solutions that we're gonna have to explore. So you're absolutely correct, Martin, and, and they are um, a stakeholder that is being engaged through this. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, doesn't look like I have any other hands up or people unmuting themselves or comments or questions in the question tool. Is there any other information um, that you'd like to share, Garnet or Devin? I'll wrap up or? I, I think we're good. Um, I, I'll probably just hang out for a few more minutes and make sure that if there's any, any stragglers. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully this, this was relatively concise in what we're trying to do. Uh, the biggest message we're putting out here is ultimately as landowners, you are more intimate with the drainage issues out there than we are. Um, so any feedback is going to be greatly appreciated and uh, it will be taken very seriously. So strongly encourage um, any feedback and, and we, will, we will be diving into it uh, a week or two after this presentation. So um, yeah, and feel free to reach out, right? We're, we're available if you need to ask questions or, or you've got some insights you want to convey. All right, so I think uh, it looks like that is all the questions we have for now. I know we're gonna stick around for a little bit longer, but unless anybody has any other questions, you know, everybody's uh, you know, in, welcome to stay on, online a little bit longer if they have any more questions or would like to see if any other questions come up. But just wanted to thank everybody for spending the time with us uh, this afternoon and for all of your questions and, and feedback providing us uh, tonight. Yes, Amen. thank you very much as well from the county. Your, uh, your feedback is very valuable. So we are uh, very happy that you're able to participate and give us feedback today. Yeah. Amanda, can you maybe post the link to the digital materials in the Q&A? And then if anyone wants to maybe click on that link, jump off, take a look at the zoom in on some of the materials, we can hang around for a bit. Sure. Does Martin have another question? I just see his hand up. Yeah, I see his hand up. Um, no, 
just a comment actually. Thank you for uh, for the opportunity to uh, talk to you guys. Actually, thank you very much, and hopefully Thanks for we calling can in. maybe talk. Yeah, thank you very much. No problem. And Martin mentioned to your friends and neighbors if 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 they have land in the in the area and they've got feedback. Uh, to, to please um, uh, let us know. Yeah, I will do that. All right. It uh, looks like I can't add it to the uh, questions tool, but what we can do is uh, send an email out to everybody who's registered uh, for the session and with some more information about where you can find um, links to the information posted online as well, a copy of the display boards if that's helpful to folks. So I'll, I'll, we'll send that as, as a follow-up email tomorrow.